Hi, and welcome to Stats with Mia. In this video, we'll talk about Little's test for whether data is missing completely at random. It's named after the statistician Rod Little. I'll first recap the missing data assumptions, then I'll describe the test. There's a short and sweet version if you just want to know how to implement it, and there's also a deep dive if you want to know more details. I'll then do a demo on how to implement this test in R, Stata, and SPSS, and I've put timestamps in the description below so you can jump to the part that's most relevant to you. Let's begin. Let's remind ourselves of the missing data assumptions. I have a full video on this, which you may want to watch first. To illustrate, I've made up this toy data set, which is about 30 cats. We have data on their income, which is in terms of the number of fish that they get per week. And we also have data on the age of the cats. And I've created these two variables so that they are independent. And the income is normally distributed with mean 4, variance 4. And the age has mean 9 and variance 9. First, I'll illustrate what it would look like for a data set to be missing completely at random. I've just randomly selected a number of incomes and a number of ages to be missing, and there's no pattern behind it at all. If the data is missing at random, that means that the missingness depends on the observed data. So for example, I've taken a couple of the older cats and made their incomes missing. Crucially, there's potential to recover some of the information from the missing data because the missingness depends on data that's observed. Now what about when data is missing not at random? Well here I've taken some of the highest earning cats and made their incomes missing. I've also made a couple of the ages missing. Here the value of the income itself determines whether that data point is missing or not. So that means that you don't really have a chance of recovering the information. Missingness depends on the unobserved data. So Little's MCAR test considers the following hypothesis. The null that the data are missing completely at random versus the alternative that the data are not missing completely at random. Now, if you reject the null hypothesis, you don't necessarily know whether the data are missing at random or missing not at random. That's something you cannot confirm with the observed data alone. Like any other hypothesis test, you'll need to set a significance level for your test. Typically, the default is 5%. You'll need to calculate a test statistic, but this will be done by software. And using the test statistic, you can generate a p-value. And if the p-value is smaller than your significance level, you reject the null hypothesis. So there is some association between the missingness patterns and the observed data. So your data is likely to be missing at random, or it could even be missing not at random. If your p-value is bigger than the significance level, you do not reject the null hypothesis. And you can reasonably assume that your data are missing completely at random. Let's look more closely at what's happening in this test. Whenever there is missing data, we can look at the patterns of missingness. In our example with income and age, there's four possible patterns. In the first pattern, you have the cats that have both income and age observed, like you see shown in green. The second pattern is that income is observed, but age is missing, like you see for these couple of cases. In the third example, you have income missing but age observed. And finally, it's possible that both income and age are missing, although we don't have any examples of this in our data set. Now I'm going to write down a bit more information about each of these patterns, keeping in mind this example. So little j is the index of the pattern, and capital J is the total number of patterns we have in our data. So for us, this is 3. I'm going to denote by pj the number of variables that are observed in each of the patterns. And p is the total number of variables. So here we've got two variables. nj 
is the number of cats that we have in each of these patterns. And what I'm going to do is write down the sample mean for each variable in each of the missing data patterns. Now this is a fabricated example, so I can compare these sample means from the data set to the true means, and I can also write down the true variance covariance matrix. Now if the data are missing completely at random, these sample means should be pretty close to the true mean. And actually in this example, I did delete some of the values completely in a random way. So we do observe that the sample means look pretty similar to the true mean. In contrast, if we remember the example where I made the incomes of the older cats missing, you can see that the ages in the third pattern are quite a lot bigger than the true value. So we want some way of comparing these sample means to the true mean and knowing when they are similar enough to assume that the data are missing completely at random or when they are too different to assume this. And that's exactly what this test statistic does. And you might see that it's very similar to the likelihood ratio test for multivariate normal data. And this test statistic has a chi-square distribution under the null hypothesis with degrees of freedom given here. However, when you have a real example, you won't have the true values of the means and you won't have the variance covariance matrix. So what you can do is to replace them with the maximum likelihood estimates under the null hypothesis. And you can do this with the EM algorithm. If you want to know more about this, you can have a look at the two references that I've put in the description below. And I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of what's going on under the hood. Now a few things to note about Little's MCAR test. It assumes that your dataset has a multivariate normal distribution. So it's not appropriate when there is very large departures from the normality assumption, or if you have categorical variables. And if you reject the null hypothesis, it doesn't actually identify which variables are associated with missingness. To assess this, you could instead do a logistic regression, where your outcome is a missingness indicator, and your independent variables are variables that you suspect might be associated with the missingness indicator. Now it's time to see how to run these tests using software. So let's run this in R. I'm going to load my dataset with my 30 cats, where I chose some values to be missing in a completely random way. So here you see the dataset. You're going to need the Narnier package. So I'm just loading the library here. You'll need to install it first if you haven't already. And you just have to write mcar underscore test and put the name of your data set. So the output tells you that there are three different missing data patterns. The test statistic is 1.06, which we expect to have a chi-square distribution with degree of freedom 2. And the p-value is very large, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. We can reasonably assume that the data are missing completely at random. Now for Stata users. We'll begin by loading the data set. This time it's the data where the incomes of the older cats tend to be missing. And I've also got a fully observed binary variable on whether it's a house cat or not. Now we're going to need to install a package for the command we need, so let's write help mcar test. That will open up this window where you can identify the package that you need to download. So to run the test, you just have to write mcar test and put the names of your variables. So for us, it's income and age. And in our output, we see that there are 30 cats. The test statistic is 18.26. The degrees of freedom is 2. And the p-value is really, really small, 0 0.0001. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. The data are not missing completely at random. In Stata, you can additionally test whether the missingness patterns are associated with any of the fully observed variables. So after the equal sign, you can include any of these fully observed variables. And as you might expect, doing this doesn't change any conclusions that we draw. 
I just wanted to demonstrate that you can test whether the missingness is associated with any covariates. Now for SPSS users. So I've loaded up my data set in SPSS, where the incomes of the older cats tend to be missing, and I've also got a binary covariate on whether the cat is a house cat or not, and this variable is fully observed. To run the test, go to Analyze, Missing Value Analysis, and you want to put your variables income and age into the quantitative variables box. Then click EM under estimation and click OK. Now you'll get quite a lot of output, but the bit that's most relevant for us is underneath the EM estimated statistics table. You'll see that the chi-square test statistic is 18.21, the degrees of freedom is 2, and the p-value is effectively zero. So you reject the null hypothesis. The data are not missing completely at random. Now I'll just show you that you can also test whether the missingness is associated with any categorical variables that are fully observed. So going back to this window, you can put your house cat into the categorical variables box. And you'll find the output in exactly the same way. Again, this doesn't change any conclusions. We still reject the null hypothesis. The data set is not missing completely at random. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you next time.